The question I'd like us to consider tonight is, is there a better way for God to be doing things than the way God is doing them? Is there a better way? And what I'd like to set aside tonight, not because of anything other than really the sake of time, and you can continue unpacking and you know, all the different la- layers and so forth, but I want to set aside the problem of evil tonight. Why does God allow evil and that kind of thing? That's a different, another homily. You could make them one, but then we'd be here for an hour, and no one wants that. <laughs> so, tonight, what, we wanna, what I wanted to unpack was just in the positive sense of God's actions in our life, in the, in the positive work of God, is there a better way for God to be active? in the world, to be working in the world, to be guiding and steering the world than the way God is doing that now? I think that's a really important question because it really gets to the heart of a lot of it for us. It really gets to the heart of things for us. How we answer that question ultimately affects our relationship with this God in, a great, in great ways in powerful ways. We see in the readings, looking at them really quickly, I think we see three of the more common types, embodiments of the ways in which we might be tempted to say, God, you should be doing this better. You should be doing this better. First of all, in the first reading, the sick are being brought to Peter and the apostles, and Peter's touching them, and some of the apostles are healing them. Even the shadow of Peter is healing people. And I think in that, we might, get, we might want to step back and say, God, why are you doing that? Why did you set it up? Particularly Peter, but just, just let's think about the whole thing. Why is it that there were special apostles? Why is it that in certain you want healing? Why did you even set up the church? Why not make Dave and Bill and Beth and everybody else? Why, why the hierarchy? You know, why do you make this church on Peter? Why is it that this healing is even happening through him? Why not just make it everybody, you know, in the church in terms of there is no hierarchy. There is no special sacraments for for healing. Why? Why? The second reading. It's the very beginning of the book of Revelation. Jesus shows up to John who writes the book of Revelation down. And it's Jesus telling John, hey, I want you to write down what you see and what I'm going to tell you. Now, the question I think there is also one that's that's relevant in this, is there a better way for God to do things? Because we can also ask in that relationship, why write it down? Jesus shows up and it's clear that John, who was his best friend and his beloved disciple, is still blown away by what he sees and covers himself out of just awe and reverence. There's trumpets and candles and God himself, Jesus Christ, standing there in all of his glory. That seemed to really impress John. Why not, Jesus, do that all the time for all of us? Are you tired? You know, are, are you only able to show up at one place at a time, or do you get exhausted doing that? That's insane. Of course God doesn't get exhausted. God can do whatever God wants. If God makes all this, then God can be present to all of this however God wants to. So why write it down? Why do, why do we have scriptures? Why is it that the God of the universe chooses to pass himself on to you and I through a book when he could show up? Maybe it seems like there's a better way for God to be doing things than the scriptures. Maybe there's a better way for God to be leading us and being in our presence than with a hierarchy and Peter and the popes and all that. And then again, along similar lines, when the third reading in the gospel tonight, why not let everybody stick their hand in the side of Jesus himself? Again, Jesus is able to show up to us Jesus could show up right here. And we might be tempted to think, I'm tempted to think, that might be pretty cool. That might make you and I take it more seriously if Jesus was here. It apparently had a big effect on Thomas. Is there a better way for God to be doing things? I think it's a really important question for us 
to process and, and, and pray over. And while not going down evil and that whole question of why that's there, let's, I would say this. That is the proposal, the initial insertion that the devil makes in, in Adam and Eve's relationship with God. There's a better way. Did God tell you that? That's not actually true. There's a better way to do this. Eat the apple. When we begin, as soon as that doubt is placed in our mind, we begin to approach God differently. God is now a lawgiver. God is somebody who's not doing miracles that he should be doing and he could be doing, but he doesn't love me enough, so he's not appearing to me. He's not healing me. He's not working in, in, in miracles in, in these regards. He's asking me to go pray in church when he could pop up and show up. Right? All these doubts that begin to creep in destroy and eat away at our relationship with God. And I think we just have to, tonight, just think about the very philosophical question or notion. Right? Not wanting, I'm not trying tonight to offer, you know, throughout the centuries, theologians have great, saints have great explanations for why it is that God might choose to say, I want to write this down and have this be the way to encounter me. There are great explanations and great rationalizations and great teachings and great guesses or, or even theologies about why it would be that God would not show up right here or show up at, at your house but instead choose to do it in, in the way that God desires. There are great reasons and explanations that many saints and teachers in the church have put forward about why Christ sets it up on Peter, the betrayer, and has a hierarchy and chooses to work through miracles, through the sacraments, and not just to say, open the floodgates completely. But I don't want us to think about, I don't want to even go down those roads of trying to explain it. I want to step back and get us to ask the bigger question. Do you think there's a better way that God could be doing things? And if there is, if you think that way, as we are all tempted to think, get rid of that. Get rid of that belief. Get rid, drive that from your life. And first and foremost, say to yourself tonight, God is working in my life perfectly. If God does not show up, it's because whatever God is doing is better. I don't understand that, but I believe it with all of my heart because I believe that this God is perfect, that he's not taking days off, that he's not choosing an easier path for God's self, that God is right now actively willing and working perfectly in my life and in your life. And maybe then we begin to see things differently. We begin to see this God, and it begins to be a God that we can fall more deeply in love with when we realize he's holding nothing back, that he's doing everything perfectly right now for you and I. May we not be people who need to see or touch or have something happen for us in our lives that's not currently happening the way we think it should. We pray to be people of faith. We pray to be people who again recognize that God is perfect and that God is working in our lives perfectly.